Welcome to Edumed. This is a YouTube channel that is dedicated to training and teaching in intensive care. What I hope to do over the course of the next set of videos is to give people a beginner's guide to intensive care. This is often a unique and new area of medicine that a lot of junior doctors don't have a lot of experience with in medical school or in their early parts of training. Hopefully through these videos we will demystify some of the areas of management of intensive care and also give you a clear and easy approach to managing these patients for yourself when you first start on the units. This first video is a basic introduction and I will go through the things that we will produce in the following videos and what to expect. I'll also go through the fundamentals of intensive care and just thinking a little bit about how to manage patients on intensive care. And finally, how to prepare yourself both mentally and physically for intensive care, which as I alluded to is a really unique area of the hospital that is quite different to anywhere else that you may work as a doctor. Now, in terms of the modules that we'll be producing as, uh, after this video, the first thing to say is that we will be using a very systematic approach and that is done on purpose. It is vital in intensive care that we don't miss any certain aspects or any details and as such by using a systematic approach we're able to maximize our chances of not missing things and improving every aspect of the patient so that we can get them through intensive care intact and whole. As such what I'll be proposing is using the ABC approach to dealing with a patient. The reason for that is that most people are familiar with ABC approaches given their teaching in basic and advanced life support. And really this is a robust method of looking at patients and one that a lot of senior doctors, consultants included, still use to this day. As we progress through with the more advanced modules, you'll start to see that we can look at patients in a slightly different way. But certainly for the first year or so of intensive care, I really would suggest using a simple ABC approach just to be thorough in your management of your patient. And we'll go through each of these different aspects in subsequent videos. I think the most important thing with intensive care is an attention to detail. Now the way in which to do that is to be methodical and to go through each system in turn and really think about the physiology and pathophysiology of that particular system, trying to optimise each one in turn before moving on to the next. I think it's quite useful in intensive care to ask yourself a couple of questions. Now, the first of those questions is one that actually is really important for any doctor when managing any patient, be that on intensive care, the general medical wards, A&E, or in surgery. And that question is, how do I use my interaction with my patient to move them forward, to move them towards their recovery? It's very easy to tread water, to say plan continuous above but really what you want to do each time you're interacting with that patient is think about what you can do to get them off the ventilator that little bit quicker get them off the vasopressors that little bit quicker make sure that you're treating their sepsis in the most appropriate mm. way possible and really the only way to do that is by thinking about all the different aspects specifically and methodically. Now the other question that's really important is thinking about the diagnosis. Is your diagnosis correct? It is so easy to go through intensive care with um, assuming one diagnosis and actually a couple of days later finding that you were completely wrong. So always revisit your diagnosis and always think could it be the right diagnosis or should you be thinking about other things. For example, a patient with sepsis, you may think that that's a bacterial sepsis, but quite commonly in intensive care where you've got immunosuppressed or complex patients, you may get fungal infections or viral infections. 
or latent infections which come back again like tuberculosis. Now these are really difficult diagnoses to make and so without constantly revisiting it, it is very easy to miss it. The other thing that's really important to consider is whether you've got more than one diagnosis. It is very common for patients to come in with one condition and then develop subsequent conditions whilst in intensive care. The perfect example is the patient who comes in with an isolated head injury, gets intubated and ventilated to protect their airway because of a decrease in GCS. And then a couple of days later, they develop a ventilator associated pneumonia. Then they develop septic shock. Then they develop an acute kidney injury and then they develop um, an acidosis. All of these things have led on from a simple, single, isolated head injury. So always check to make sure that you have not missed a condition. And if, you've, if you're methodical in the way that you deal with each system, you will never miss these things. The final thing that's really important to think about in terms of the fundamentals of intensive care is communication. Now, there are many teams that work in intensive care with that patient. You as the doctors are only a small part of it. The nurses at the bedside need to know what's going on. The physiotherapists, the dietitians, the nutritionists, the base medical surgical specialty team that the patient is under all need to know what's going on. And as such, it's really important to give a clear vision of what the problem is and also of what your plan is to move the patient forward. I think it's really important to every single day write a short summary sentence just to say what's going on with them. So for example, a patient with a head injury saying, this patient came in with a head injury which is um, slowly improving and the diffuse cerebral edema is improving on the last CT scan. However, they have developed a ventilator-associated pneumonia, which has caused septic shock, although the noradrenaline levels are reducing. And the acute kidney injury has responded to a couple of days of um, renal replacement therapy and fluid therapy. They are now weaning off the um, renal replacement therapy, and we hope to have them off the uh, filter by the end of the week. Just a simple set of statements like that gives everyone who reads those notes a good idea of where the patient is at and where you are heading. Is this a deteriorating patient? Is this a patient who's staying completely static? Or is this a patient who's improving? Within the communication, the other really important point is to make sure that you've got a clear plan. Now, by clear, what we want are objective targets for people to aim towards. There is no use in saying, I want this patient negative fluid balance by the end of the shift. That could mean a variety of different things to different people. That could mean minus 100 mils, or that could mean minus three liters. And without being clear, it is very difficult for both the nurses and the doctors to really achieve what you're aiming for. So when you're giving plans, aim for targets. Set a target, a partial pressure of oxygen of between eight and 10. And so then that gives the nurse the leeway to actually titrate their oxygen downwards instead of just saying, wean the oxygen off. For example, with fluid balance saying, Aim for neutral to minus 500 by 6 a.m. the next day. That way, you allow the nurses the power, you empower them really, to make adjustments to the treatment to try and get to the point that you want. And really, all of the plans should be about empowering people to share in your vision of what's wrong with the patient and moving them forward so that they improve by the next shift and then the next shift after that and then the shift after that. There should always be a constant movement towards improvement. Of course, there will be deteriorations, as there always are with complex intensive care patients. However, the relentless move forward to improvement should still be aimed for. The final slide of this talk is how to survive intensive care. 
I will be going into a lot more detail about this in future videos. However, I wanted to emphasize a few key points that anyone starting intensive care should really know. The first thing is to always ask for help. As I alluded to before, we work in a huge team with the do other doctors, with nurses, with dietitians, physios, and so many other people. If you're prescribing something and you're not quite sure what it is, there is a pharmacist who will help you. There are other nurses who will help you. There are the senior doctors who will help you. Never feel like you can't ask for help. It is not a sign of weakness. It is a sign of strength. The juniors that I often worry the most about are the ones who never ask for help. Because even the most senior of doctors, even the consultants will talk to other consultants and other senior registrars and say, can I just double check I'm doing the right thing? No one is perfect. We do not expect you to be perfect. And along with that, only you can only do what you can do. What I mean by that is you will have a huge number of people talking to you, expecting different things and asking you for help with a variety of different things. Focus on what you need to focus on. And if you find that things are getting overwhelming, don't just try to muddle along ask for help. Even the most senior intensive care doctor will still feel overwhelmed. And what do we do when we're overwhelmed? We talk to a friend and we say, look, can you give me some help? The great thing about intensive care is when you ask for help from a cardiologist or a spiritual physician or a surgeon, they come straight away. Because A, we're talking about very sick patients and everyone wants to help. But B, you're often the person who's helping them. And so when you ask them to give you a hand, they will drop everything and come for you to help you. So do not be afraid to ask for help. You're always working in a team. We'll go through the methodological way in which you should look after patients, but that methodical manner is really important. I will purport the ABC approach, there are others, but suffice to say if you aren't methodical in the way that you approach each intensive care patient, you will miss something and you cannot afford to miss something in patients who are critically unwell. Finally, and I will go through this in a lot more detail in future videos, always think about the physiology and the pathophysiology of what's going on. Each of your plans should be tailored towards what's the underlying physiological problem that's going on. So for example, with sepsis, making sure that you think about the organism that's causing it and how you're going to treat it. If you're thinking about septic shock, thinking about what's causing the low perfusion state. Is it that they're very vasoplegic? Or is it that they've developed a septic cardiomyopathy? Or is it that they've actually had an MI because of the strain from the sepsis that the patient's had? And actually it's nothing to do with septic shock, but it's actually a cardiogenic shock. These are very difficult diagnoses to make in patients who are intubated, ventilated, cannot give you a history of chest pain or breathlessness or whatever that you would normally rely upon when you're taking a history and examination from a patient. So always think about the physiology and manage that physiology. Easier said than done, and even the most experienced intensive care doctor will still struggle with this. But by doing so, you will improve your patient's recovery and you will become much better as an intensivist if you think about the physiology underlying whatever the patient's presentation is. So I look forward to going through in the next few videos each of the different areas of intensive care, going through an ABC approach. This set of videos is really the fundamentals of intensive care and what I hope to do over the course of them is to really give you a and an idea of how to manage an intensive care patient and demystify some of the areas of intensive care that to people outside find very daunting but actually once you're doing it you find that it's actually quite self-explanatory. If you like this video please like it 
subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification. I hope to produce videos on a regular basis between my um, shifts uh, and then give you a whole group of videos that you can watch in your own time as um, an introduction to intensive care and also just as a revision of the different areas of intensive care. So thank you very much and I hope to see you again in the next video.